I started cutting up that poplar tree. All right, and here she is, and it's looking pretty good. Although it was uh, very cold last night, I was kind of worried about it, but here's the uh, oak that I cut up right here. And um, man, it had a slight crack toward the end and that thing just ran. But I did get a couple nice pieces of oak. I'm gonna use that for something else, but this is the poplar that I cut up and that's looking really nice. So I cut it three quarter inch thick eight inches wide and more than nine feet long all i need is nine feet um, yeah that's looking really good so i got i don't know how many boards but i was i had a bit of a setback on the log and i'll show you when i get up there but so this is the task today i got that poplar tree I use the first piece that is closest to the trunk or closest to the base, the roots. That was the widest part and that's the part that gave me problems and I'll show you. But this is uh, piece number two and number three off of that tree. And it's really straight. We got a nice healthy amount of wood there. And I'm gonna cut this up into eight inch pieces for some more siding for the shed. So I got these slabs that I cut for the siding off the ground and I stacked them up here just to um, get them out of the way. They're not wasted by any means, but here's what I'm talking about. Look, see the split? It goes that way. Now that derived from here. It's on the other side of this log. Okay, there, here's the big piece, all right? That derived from this piece here. It went all the way up the log. Now, what I was trying to explain before is if I turned this thing so that this was basically parallel with the deck of the sawmill, I could have come here and just cut that whole section out and then have the rest of this really good wood. I just, I just uh, positioned it wrong on the deck of the sawmill. My mistake, my mistake. And so look, here's, I can't really use, the, these are beautiful too. They're like 15 inches wide. Um, See, that one's the worst of them. And then I know once this thing dries, that's gonna crack too. It's starting to crack already. See, that one, I got that one, I got that one. Now, like I said, we're not gonna waste these. I can cut these, I can get a chunk out of there and get a nice like maybe six inch chunk out of here and run them on the sawmill and use them for other projects. Um, I could use it for a ton of things. This could be, I do intend on milling some of the poplar we have here stacked up underneath this pile. I do plan on using it for the trim in the house. And it's just poplar is very, very nice wood. Um, once you plane it down and it, it accepts paint really well. So trim in a house or, you know, chair rail, anything like that. It, poplar is a really good choice. So, all right, I'm examining this log here. I'm about to cut it and I have a, I don't think that, I think that's just the little drying crack here, but I'm going to be cutting this, learn from mistakes. So I have a slice here. This will be the top when I ultimately turn this thing around. So if I do start slicing and I come to this point, I'm only gonna lose maybe like two or three passes on it and not the whole board. So I saw that and I made the proper orientation and now we're gonna cut, so. All right, we are off to sharpen my blades. So these are my Woodmiser blades. They're the, 
Oh man, I don't even remember the pack. It's the five pack for a hundred bucks. They're supposed to just be kind of like your universal blade. Good enough for me, good enough for cutting pine and poplar and a little oak. Probably not oak, but I do anyway. But, so I got my bench grinder set up and I've never done this before. This is the more fine blade here. I don't have the guards for this. Oh well. That's the more coarse side. I'm gonna use the uh, the fine side and what I'm gonna do here is try to show you without the machine running. I'm gonna go around and every tooth, I'm gonna be nipping the back there like that. I'm gonna be nipping the back side of the tooth the back, not the inside, the back. And the inside is, I think, called the gullet. I'm not even gonna bother touching that. I've seen a few people do this on YouTube and they, it seems like the guys with the bench grinders have the most success at, well, being the quickest, I guess. So I've never done this before. I'm gonna, of course, start where the seam is on the blade. And I'm just gonna crank up the art. No, it is high. That's good. Don't need that on. All right, let's see what happens here. I get my right angle here. See how I'm doing. Damn. I mean, the the few teeth I did compared to the ones past it seems a lot sharper. So I'll be able to tell once I got it on the mill. But I know that it's a lot better than what I was just working with. The other one was pretty dull. All right, the new sharp blade is performing pretty well. Happy with that. Probably should have used the original blade the thing came with before messing with the good blades. Although, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's mu that much difference, to be honest with you. Okay, so I stacked up all the slabs of the three quarter inch siding that I'm gonna process here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got a dozen. I got a cool dozen pieces. So yeah, 80 plus, what does that give me? 96, that gives me eight linear feet of siding. That's pretty cool. I think that's right. So I'm gonna run this through and then I'll have eight inch pieces and we'll see what we can do with the rest.
doing a true board and batten here on the shed. And if you can envision panels like this here going up vertically and they're stacked, they're butted next to each other the whole way and then you, the batten would be the small strip of wood that comes off of those to cover up the seams. So our boards are eight inches wide. I, we haven't decided what the battens are gonna be. What do you think, like two inches, something like that? Sounds good. Okay, so we're gonna do that the whole way, but as you noticed in any structure, the um, studs here are vertical. So we need some cross studs here and I think they're called perils. I could be wrong. Um, if it's wrong, I'll put the correction yeah, in text right asterisk. now. Yeah, little asterisk, okay. Uh, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna space them on center 24 inches up all the way up the wall which we'll have to do four between every opening the windows and the doorway i'm just gonna center one between here because i think the 24 inches is like up here somewhere so instead of going right here like on schedule i'm just gonna put it in the middle here because we'll have a small board and batten here and above I, so I went ahead and did this already. I feel like you should go on schedule so that all the nails line up though, no? You won't see any nails. Oh. We're not gonna see nails. They'll be underneath They're the batten. They're on the edges? Yeah. So it's under the batten. Okay. Yeah. You wanna go on schedule? We could do that. Whatever you want. All right, so we're gonna go on schedule. <laughs> Even though it looks kind of goofy, we're gonna go 24 inches up and boom, put a cross stud right there. This is our apple tree. It looks like it should be in uh what's that movie? Yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. It's interesting. Last year it looked half dead and you'll notice some of these don't have any buds and then some of them do. I mean look at how pretty that is. Next week, those are going to be beautiful. I'll probably use it as my opening shot on the episode. So what's going to happen with this? There were no apples last year. And if you look at the trunk, I mean, it's been destroyed by woodpeckers. And half of it, look at this. It's like it's hollow inside. How is this tree even alive when it's missing half of the tree, half of the trunk? There's some of it. And then it has these beautiful blooms on it. I don't... I love that little nest. Isn't that so cute? And then this tree has these blooms. I just, I don't understand it. The tree is alive with that hole. So do you think we'll get any apples? I do, there's flowers. There are flowers. I, I did some research that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get apples. Ah. But, I'm hopeful. I mean, look at that. The whole tree is, is covered. We have no idea what kind of apple it is, but it's definitely been here a long time. The birds love it. There's always blue jays and cardinals on this tree. So predictions, thoughts? So we were here in the summer last year. We looked at the property in July. We didn't know there was all, but we, we had no idea this was even an apple tree then. And in July, there, we didn't know it was an apple tree. In August, there was no apples on it when we found out there was an it was an apple tree. And September, October, there was no apples on it. So, I don't know. I'm excited. The owner said if you uh, trim up that tree, you might get some apples out of it, so. Should we trim it? I think the time to have trimmed would have been in the fall.
walking right over here. Walking? I was walking. Guess what I found? I can get it out of my pocket. Another one of those metal balls. And now we have done it. If, if you've been following along, you know that I found five of these right at the corner of the shed a couple weeks ago. And now I found one more. This makes six. And we have done more research now. We thought that they were um, for some kind of rifle. They are called canister shot. And they were put into like a soup can type size thing. And they were put into cannons and shot at short distances in the Civil War during uh, close combat. So these are probably relics from the Civil War, which is pretty cool. Canister shot. This is our milled poplar. We got three quarter inch poplar, it's eight inches wide. Uh, we cut all of them to nine foot four ish so that they could do a vertical run up our shed here. So we're going to start siding. We already put up our cross studs here, this whole wall, and we wanted to do something different. So instead of continuing with that around all four walls, we're just going to start putting up the siding. And according to our math, <clears throat> if we start right in the middle and work out on both sides, we will end up nicely when we get to a corner. Instead of starting on one side and coming over here, it would end up with like a quarter of a piece. It would just look kind of weird. So we're going to center it up and go out and see what it looks like. All right. <clears throat> I'm just going to put this board up on the mark that I made there, center in the door, and level it and we'll run off of this one. Sound okay. good, Meg? Yeah. You know those cool lines in this? Like, that's it authentic. Does, it does look cool. Isn't that neat? I looked up on Lowe's website mm -hmm. what these boards, if we were to go to the store <laughs> and buy them, yeah. what we would have spent on them yeah. and the closest in dimension that I could find to get one of these boards would have been $47 a board which is unreal you know what I like about this too so we've been milling all of this but and I it's literally me the operator on the saw walking the blade through cutting it so if you look and you can see it really nice right now with the sun, the shadow. The lines are totally... Your steps. It has variation. No, it has variation to it because this, the yeah. distance between this and this, like that's probably a revolution of the blade once around. Uh -huh. And there's probably a rough spot on a tooth somewhere giving me that texture. That's just so cool. But it is your steps because if you... My steps? What do you mean? Yeah, it's your steps while you're walking the mill because if you were walking faster, those grooves would be further apart because the mill would yes. be moving faster. Right, so exactly. So when I said it was your steps, that mm -hmm. makes sense. That indicates one revolution of the blade, the amount that I travel while one blade mm -hmm. goes around. Pretty cool. It is. I thought that was neat when I was looking at it because I was like, oh, it's consistent. Is it going to match up or what? But it's totally random. Sometimes I slow down, other times I go fast, depending on how the blade feels. So this is of the siding yesterday at the end of the day and we were pretty happy with how they're going up. So our batten is, is going to cover up all the nail holes and the seams here and we haven't decided what that's going to be. It's either going to be two or two and a half inches. I like the two and a half. Uh, but we will put those up with uh, small staples 
and I was trying to find a fastener for this siding because the problem is I don't want this to crack. When I did put up the first piece, I actually took a test piece of this, this board, and I put a nail through the end of it and the tension of the nail really, uh, it put a split right in the board instantly and I don't want that split to run all the way up here over time. So I think for the tops and bottoms, this is the bottom obviously, we're going to put in galvanized staples a whole bunch of them, probably like five or six along the bottom. Here I was testing what we should use. I don't think those are strong enough to hold the siding. We can't use those on all the siding, but everywhere in the middle, see right here, we're going to be using the framing nails that I have, which is the same stuff that I put the, um, that I framed everything with, the structural framing. So we got some new tools, just uh, with actually two new nail guns. So the one nail gun that I use, uses these framing nails, and I use the galvanized stuff, okay? So it uses really long, I think they're three inch or three and a quarter. These three are inch. Three inch. All right, cool. So those are three inch. We've been going through a lot of these. With all these cross studs we're doing, we're probably gonna go through that whole box. So another 2,000 nails, that's great. So they go in that big gun there, which weighs a ton. Um, my father-in-law, thanks Papa, gave me this uh, this finishing nailer, which takes brad nails only. And I got some more nails for that right here. I got these galvanized also. What are brad nails? They're just straight tees like that. So it takes that type oh. of shot. So some of these guns, and this is a 16 gauge gun, meaning that the, um, the thickness of this nail is a little bit thicker than your 18, obviously. Um, but this gun does not shoot staples. Some guns shoot both. That's going to be great inside the house, putting up trim and like all a bunch of stuff. So we'll be able to buy the bright finish nails too. That's going to be used quite often. But I also picked up this little guy today and this shoots. It's Meg size. Yeah, this is really nice because it's so lightweight and it takes these staples. Um, which I'm a big fan of because whenever you shoot these brads, it's like you got this tiny, tiny little head to hold the board, but these staples gives you something nice to grab some meat. some fibers or some meat on the board. So I'm a fan of those. We're going to use these. These are galvanized for the top and bottoms of the siding board, and the rest we're going to use the framing nailer. So we got all three. We got a small, a medium, and a large gun. We should be able to nail whatever we want except for roofing but we're not doing shingles so okay so we got all sorts of goodies roofing we're... nailer is different well if you're putting up shingles it's the nails with like the really fat head on them and they're not that long oh. yeah so meg and i like to set unrealistic goals for ourselves right meg oh yeah and uh i really wanted to impress meg and get all four walls done today with the cross studs like we're doing. So we're moving along good. We go stop for a water break. Power goes out. I don't know why. Power went out. I mean, it's not even windy. I wonder what happened. Unfortunately, John's tractor is being serviced. He had a problem with the steering wheel. It's under warranty, so it's being repaired. But the problem is we don't have the tractor to carry stuff. We have to do it the hard way.
Yes, I do. Oh, here, that. you work on the next set. I'll do this because I got to be on this side. I just want to do that part. You like that part? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it looks good. With our building. Yeah. A lot of squares going on here. There are a lot of squares. Good job, Cedar. You did good. Beat up pretty good, Meg. Yeah. Now I say those two for something. Lots of boxes. A lot of nails. How many nails? Uh, we're getting close to 3,000 total. And then also the ones that we hand put in. Yeah. You count those? No. I mean, just the framing nails. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Good job, John. Oh, you too, honey. Want to make a fire? Yeah, I do. All right. Great. Let's do it. It'd be relaxing. Looking good. Yesterday, we got this thing up. We got all the cross studs up. All four walls. That's a lot of cross studs. So now comes the siding. And I guess, like anything else, I'm gonna start on the difficult side, which is right here. Started a little bit. I'm gonna run a couple planks. There's a window there, window there, doorway. And then the other side is just a simple doorway, a very wide one, so I'll get, I'll get done with that one in no time. And then I'll start running the back and, and the west side. We're getting pretty close here, guys. We need to put some extra studs up here. And we gotta put some um, some cross studs on the roof to give something for the tin roof to be attached to. Other than that, we are getting very close for doors and windows and everything else, trim. So here's, uh, here's my pile of siding I have to work with. That's all cut for me already tractor should be back today or tomorrow so i'll be able to cut some more wood look what happened to the oak i did cut some oak look, holy cow look at the bend in that thing um that's oak all oh, this is oak this is another pile of poplar so surprising there's no roof but it's dramatically cooler inside the shed here because of uh, everything overhead pretty cool we're getting close looks really cool with all the cross studs in here Siding's going up good. Check it out. Here's the inside. Pretty cool. I like that you could see all this stuff too. Nice and tight. I'm glad I decided to do the framing nails right here along the seams. Here and here. I'm basically doing them all the way up except for the very top and the very bottom. The, that I'm doing staples. Hopefully you could see that. Just galvanized uh, staples. I think they're an inch and a half or something like that. I was actually uh, researching board and batten, and I was trying to determine how big the batten should be, and I got to reading online, and apparently this style of architecture dates back a really long time when people had homesteads, and what they wanted to do was construct a, a building, like a shed or a barn or something like that and they didn't want to necessarily use sheathing, which is what I want to do. I just have a goal to make this thing out of all the material we have here on the property. I didn't want to run out and buy OSB. Number one, it's expensive, and number two, I feel like that's not really the pioneer way of doing things. This is more of just a personal goal, just using your own materials on site to do it. I guess taking that the extreme, we could have shingled the roof out of cedar, but we're gonna do a metal roof just for the durability of it. But anyway, uh, board and batten, it dates back a long time, and it just allows you to put up the boards without any sheathing. It's going to tie everything together nice, and all of this is exposed on the inside. It looks cool with all these cross studs and everything. Uh, people do it this, uh, this way. They also do it with these cross studs diagonally. Um, but there's a couple different styles you could do it, and I find it funny that this is the... Um, I don't want to say cheap. This is the most economical way to build a structure with your own material. And the funny thing about it is that, you know, a lot of like modern home building, it's a desired trait to have this type of uh, architecture or siding on your house. You see a lot of vertical planks with the small planks uh, raised above it. 
and it's just you know you see these on very expensive homes but if you know the history of it you know it's a it's actually a cheap way of building a building so little fun fact i thought i'd share it um i did i wasn't going into it with that i just thought hmm how can i build this building all on my own with having without having to rely on going to the store and aside from nails i really and i guess the metal roof that's all i want wanted to use as far as purchasing stuff from the store um but pretty satisfying <laughs> All right, so we got this done. I would say the most difficult side of the shed is the front because it has the windows in the doorway and just, you know, a bunch of cutouts here and there. But I got this done in a single session. Really proud of that. And I really, I'm just thrilled. I'm glad I did the cross studs. Um, so I put these framing nails on the cross studs and from the inside, it looks even cooler. So look at that. So I'm going to do all the walls first and then after that I'll probably come back around and do the trim and the batten. Actually the batten would probably be last because what I'm going to do is do the windows here. We're going to do a craftsman style uh, but we're not going to have the overhang at the top. We just want kind of butt joints here so it'll run here and then this one will come this way or no I'm sorry this one will come this way. And then the vertical up and the other one will meet right up. We're not going to have a little overhang at the top. But that will determine where the uh, batten here will start and go down the wall, if that makes sense. Uh, I could go ahead and start doing the battens here, which is covering up the seams. I'm going to do a good two and a quarter inch batten, covering up the seams, get a lot of caulking to do, stuff like that. Um, it's coming out really good. Really proud of it. That's it. Hard, hard wall's done. This wall's gonna be just run with it. Just put it up. Nothing in the way. The next wall I'm probably gonna make the turn over here is do the garage door. This one here, which is just run your nine foot planks and then you'll run some short ones and run some more nines and then make the run in the back and the other wall and we'll be in real good shape. But yeah, so the cross studs, I was, uh, I fired those framing nails into these cross studs and I was looking around and couldn't see a misfire anywhere. So I'm happy about that. It looks really nice and it gives us a little extra storage here having all these shelves in this space because we're going to leave it just, you know, not, we're not going to um, put any walling up at this point. So that's it. Hit the car. Um, but this gun does not shoot staples. Some guns shoot both. So while I was out today, I 
the other direction. It does. This way? No. This happened last night. No, honey. Honey, honey. No, turn it again. Nope. <laughs> <Look at> that. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. Thanks for the assistance. <laughs> So we 